Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using ASP.NET Core 3 and Angular 10. In the last video tutorial, we were working on the user section view. This is a continuation of the video tutorial where we will be implementing the APIs that we would need to display the user's data in our application. We already have implemented the UI and the JavaScript methods in the last video tutorial. If you haven't watched that video tutorial, I recommend you to go ahead and watch it. And if you want the source code, the source code is available in the video description. And you can continue along with me in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will be focusing on implementing all the API endpoints that we are going to be calling from the JavaScript uh, methods that we have implemented, like add user, update user, and also the delete user methods and the method to load all the users in the tabulator table. So let's go ahead and start creating our API endpoints. So in the version 1 folder of our API, I have created a controller class and I have implemented the following filters on this controller class. First is the API version filter. Then we have the API controller indicating that this class is an API controller. Then we implement the route for the access of this API endpoint. And finally, we add the authentication filter or the authorization filter with the authentication scheme. Now the authentication scheme is admin. That's because this controller and all its members can only be accessed by the admin user. We have injected two objects. That's the user service and the web hosting environment. And we have instantiated these objects using dependency ingestion. Now, the next thing that we would want to do is implement this class from the controller base because this is an API controller. It doesn't have a view. Therefore, change the controller implementation to controller base. Now we have created the controller and added these two members. We would need to create another service and we are going to do it shortly. But the need for that service is because we have many methods that we are going to use to implement CRUD operations on the user table. Currently, when we are implementing these CRUD operations, these operations will be performed by the admin user. After a few weeks or let's say while you're deploying this project, you want to add additional roles in your application. Currently, you have only admin, but you want to create another area for moderator, another area for supervisor, and so on. In that case, these particular user roles will have different permissions. So you would have to edit your existing methods to limit certain uh, role privileges to these users. So creating one service and implementing all the methods in one service just for the same all the users is going to cause confusion. So we will have separate services for admin, separate services for any other roles that we create in our application like a moderator, supervisor and so on. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a service in our application. Let's call this service as backend service. Go to the project, add a new class library. Make sure you select the .NET Core class library. Here we will name this service as backend service. We'll make sure that we create the project inside our main project folder, which contains all the class library projects and our main project. Let's create open and then create this new project. We don't need the default class that is created, so we will get rid of it. And here we will implement all the required services that we need for different user roles. Currently, we have only one primary role which is the admin user. So let's go ahead and add the service and interface class for the admin user. So we'll add a new class. We will call this admin SVC and then we will go ahead and create this new class. We will also add a interface. So let's select a empty interface. Call this interface iAdmin SVC. And we make sure that we implement this interface on this class. Now here, any methods that will be called by the admin, we will implement all those methods over here. 
if you have multiple roles you can create more services as I explained if you want uh, methods that can only be accessed by moderators then create a moderator service and add those methods and logic within that service class for now since we have only one user primary user that's the admin so we will create all the logic for admin user inside this uh, service that we have created so here inside the admin service we will go ahead and add the references to certain projects because we will need their classes and methods to be implemented here in this service so let's add these references we will add a reference to the activity service we will add reference to the cookie service we will add reference to the logging service to log any errors we will also need the email service since we have not yet implemented emails in this application sending emails to our users we will implement that service once we have created the email service for now we just need these three services referenced in this backend service project so let's go ahead and click ok once we have referenced the required projects we will need to instantiate certain objects and the way we do that you know the drill we will go ahead and instantiate these objects using dependency ingestion so let's go ahead and instantiate all the required objects that we need in the admin service so here I have added all the required objects, instantiated them using dependency injection and assigned the values to these objects that we are going to use in our methods that we are going to create. So go ahead and create all these required objects. We will require the user manager class instance, the hosting environment, the application DB context, the cookie service, the activity service, the data protector to unprotect the tokens, the service provider to access services, and the data protection keys to get access to the encryption or decryption keys. Now the next thing that we would want to do is go ahead and create the methods that we would need and these methods will be used by the admin user in our application. So I have created and implemented the methods that we will need in the admin service these are the following methods that you would need to create inside your admin service first we would need a get user profile by username method when we would want to get the details of a particular user we will get the details of that user using their username so when this method is called we will pass the get uh, the user's username as the parameter in the method and then we will go ahead and fetch the user's details from our database we can make use of the user manager instance that is the user manager class which is a part of the asp.net core identity framework we can fetch the user's details there is a extension method available for us which is find the user by their username find by name async all we need to do is pass the username in the parameter of the method and it will fetch the user details but before we go ahead and fetch the user details we need to make sure that the request that is coming in to get these users details is being made by a admin user we have to validate that the admin user is making this request and not somebody else in our application and to do that we have created an extension method called as get logged in user now the get logged in user id method was also created in one of our previous services where we used it to find out if the request is made by the admin or is made by a genuine user here we have created the same extension method where inside the browser cookie where we store all the encrypted cookies we also store the user id cookie which is encrypted so we will get that cookie and decrypt that cookie and find the actual value once we have the actual value after we have decrypted the cookie we will find the user by that user id if the user id of that user matches the user id of our administrator then or the user role is an administrator role we will go ahead and let the user access these methods if the user role is not administrator then that particular user cannot access any methods within the admin service so we will be using this extension method 
called as get logged in user id in most of these methods that we have created in this admin service now let's go back to the get user by username method here we will check if the value is null or it's not null depending on this execution that we have done using the user manager uh, instance if we don't find any user then we will return null and if we found any user then we will map over the details of that user to the profile model and we are going to return this profile model back to the client or back to our admin user so the admin can view the details of the user so this was the get user profile by username also in our methods we have implemented logging so in case if there is an error while this process takes place then we can log that error and we have instantiated the user profile at the very beginning so we will be returning a empty or a null value back when we cannot find a, or any user due to an error so let's close this now let's look at the second method which is get all users uh, now the get all users method will also be used uh, in the admin panel when we try to load the user section so if we look at the finished project when we go to the user section and go to all users the you will see a list of all users in your application and the list is displayed on the tabulated table now we fetch the list of all these users using this method that we have created in the admin service which is get all users async we have also created a user model now in the model service you would need to create a new class called as user model in this class you're going to add the following properties the username the email first and last name the profile pic uh, which will be the source or the image string the profile whether it's complete and the profile whether it's active now these are the same properties that we are going to display in the tabulated table if you need to add additional properties that you need to be displayed on the tabulated table you can add them to the user model and then when we fetch the tabulated table you can add those properties in the javascript file for now we will be only displaying the following of values in the table because we don't want all the values to be fetched from the table that will be a lot of data and that process is going to take some time so we will fetch only the information that is immediately needed for the admin to view and in case if the admin needs more details about a particular user then they can click the edit user and when this edit user button is clicked then the information of the user will be fetched using the method that we have created that is get a user profile by username so all the details will be fetched and this method will be called so we are going to use this method to get the list of all the users and return it back to the client that is the admin panel which is going to display the information also while fetching the user information we are only fetching those users whose value is active so in case any user is deleted in your application then that user would not be shown currently we are not deleting the user from the database we are only going to mark the user as inactive so in case if we need uh, some information about the user we can access it even though the user is not active we'll explain this as we proceed to the delete user method but for now we are only fetching all the users whose profile is currently active and displaying it if you don't want to set this flag you can remove it and show the list of all users and it doesn't matter whether it's active or it's not active so let's minimize this go to the other method that we have created which is the add user method so the admin will have access to also add a new user in the application if you go back to the application we have a button new user so the admin can add a new user in the application and the form that we are using will 
get all the values and forward it to the API method and the API method or the endpoint will then call the add user async method and this uh, method will add a new user in our application so as you can see that first we validate if the request is coming in from an admin user and if not we are going to return an error but if the user is an admin user so in the user manager class we again have a extension method by asp.net core identity called as create async all we need to do is pass in a application user object and the password of the user so that we can create the user in the application now the password as you know when we create the user we have created a password generator method in javascript and we use that to create a temporary password for the user the user can change this password they will receive an email and they can change that password when they receive that email to notify when, when the account is created we will talk about that when we implement the email service but for now this method uh, will be used to create a new user in our application by the admin so let's go back update the user profile the update profile async method is required to update any user's profile for some reason the user cannot update their profile they have some issues or somebody in uh, in your application needs to be marked as inactive there are many reasons where the admin would have to update the user's profile manually in that case what we can do we can make use of this update profile async method and the edit user form to update the user's profile when the update button is clicked the request is sent to the api and the api will forward the request to this method or call this method which will be updating the user's information now here in this method we are passing the form data this form data is the form data that we are passing from the uh, browser using the form data api we have spoken about this in the profile controller uh, class when we created it so we are not going to spend time explaining it once again so we receive the form data we check if the user is admin user we validate the uh, incoming request and then we find the user by their user id and if we find any user with a particular user id then we update their profile with the new information that we have received inside this method we have created a extension method which is the update profile async method which is inside this class here if the user wants to update their profile so the form data object that we received will contain the new profile picture information before creating the new picture or before updating the new profile picture we will make a copy of the old profile picture of the user we will save it in our on a server as a backup in case the update process fails then we can restore the user's old profile picture and if the update profile method is a success that means the details of the users as user has been updated successfully then we can go ahead and delete this uh, backup image that we have created uh, which we had created or stored in our database so we don't need it anymore because the information or the update was successful so this uh, was it for the update profile method and the delete user method uh, i spoke about it in the uh, get all users method but here we have the delete user method and here once we delete any user we will mark the user status as not active we will not delete the user from our database currently uh, in some countries it is strictly uh, it's a strict requirement that we keep the users information in our database for certain amount of days before we delete it completely uh, think about it like this if that user if you are an e-commerce website and that user has ordered certain items from your website and after ordering the item the user will ask you to delete the account 
you delete the user's account that means you delete the entire history of that user then you will have no longer access to what items were sold to that user and in that scenario the user can claim that they have never received their items and you cannot then tell them that we have already sent you that items because you don't have their history so it's always good to mark the users as inactive rather than deleting them from your database and then we can run a schedule task that will look for inactive users and if any user has been inactive for more than 90 days or more than six months you can then go ahead and delete those users from your database so in this particular cms application we are not going to delete the users we will be marking them as inactive when in the future video tutorial series where i will be showing you how to use schedule tasks in your application i will show you how to create a task to delete inactive users after a certain period of time but that is not within the scope of this application or this tutorial so for now i'm leaving it as inactive if you don't want the user to be inactive you can call the remove method on your entity that is the, we are using entity framework so we have a remove method and you can remove the user from your database it's up to you and your requirement so that's the delete user method next method is the reset password method so in certain scenarios the user would not be able to reset their password the account is locked there can be many reasons so as an admin user you would need to have access to update the user's password or reset the user's password so we have this reset password method which will be used by our admin to reset any user's password and we have also added an activity once we reset that user's password we will also update that user's activity table informing them that their password was changed so once they log in under the activities they can see all their changes or the updates made to the account here inside the reset password method we have created an extension method called as uh, uh, password uh, generator or generate password as you can see uh, i'm calling this method generate password this method is an extension method since i don't want to manually create passwords i can create passwords using this extension method so this extension methods will randomly create a 10 digit password i've specified the length in the parameters so it will create a 10 digit password and return it back to me and i can then assign that 10 digit password to this reset new password for the user so this will help us uh, when we don't want to create the passwords manually and once again in the user manager class we have the reset password method that we will use to reset the password we have to pass the user object the code and the password so we would have to generate a code for the user when we change their password and this code uh, will uh, be used by the user when they uh, log into their account so this uh, code is basically a token that will expire after a certain period of time so that's how the asp.net core identity system works so if the user is not he has not changed their password or not used this new password that we created for them or this temporary password that we created for them if they have not used it within 24 hours we can set the time but i think the default value is 24 hours so if they have not changed it they will not be able to change it after 24 hours they have to request us again to reset their password so usually it happens in most of the websites where you forgot your where you for, forgot your password and they send you a new password in your email but that email or that password is only valid for the for the next 24 hours so that's how asp.net core identity system works as well so you can uh, change the timing of how long you want it there are additional extension methods and i'm not going to go into details you can read the documentation on generate password reset token uh, method from user manager class and you can get more information on it so for now that's all we do uh, we will then go ahead and look at the 
other methods that we have over here we have the create response method that we use to generate a response uh, and send it back to the client these are extension method and we spoke about the update profile and the insert or update address uh, since we have uh, when we are updating the user's profile we are going to use this method as well so we want to update the shipping address and the billing address so we have to make two calls so i have created an extension method to update these addresses and all this extension method does it checks if the user already has an address in the address table then it will update it and if the user does not have any address at all then it will create a new address so in the case of shipping address we might not have the user shipping address so we will go ahead and create a new shipping address for the user but if we already have a address then we will go ahead and update it so that's the logic implemented in this extension method called as insert or update as the name suggests insert or update address if it's available we'll update it if it's not available we'll insert it in the database now all these methods that we have created over here in the admin service it's important that we implement them in the uh, in the interface so that they can be called and used in other classes so that's all for the admin service we don't have to do anything over here we can go ahead and close our admin service now and let's go back to our endpoint that is the user controller class let's go ahead and implement all the required endpoints or the api methods that we will be calling to perform CRUD operations on the user section so guys i have implemented the api endpoints and once again i'll go and explain to you how all these methods work so first thing that you would want to do is you have to create the admin user object and instantiate it using dependency injection also the next thing you would want to do is in order to reference this admin user you will have to add the project reference so add the project reference for your backend service in your main project and then click ok once you have added the reference you will be able to use the admin service inside your controller class now since we are using this admin service using dependency injection it becomes important for us to inject this in our pipeline so we'll go to the startup class and here inside the startup class we will make sure we add the admin service to the middleware so here just after the authentication service i can go ahead and add the admin service as i explained before there is no order to be followed here you can place it wherever you like so i'm going to add the backend service a reference and here we have added the admin service to our middleware so now when we inject this in our application controller class we will have no errors now let's go ahead and look at the get users endpoint this endpoint is called by our javascript and all this endpoint does it calls the get all users method that we created in the admin uh, user service or admin service and it returns a list of users if the list of users we cannot find any users or if we don't have any users it will return an empty list now let's go back to the next method which is the get user by their username when we click on the edit button on the list that we have in the tabulator we get the user's detail by their username so we will pass the username in the route or the url of our call and we will access that value using the from route attribute here we are telling the uh, method that this username is available in the url after the action methods name the property that you will find is the username all we do is pass this value to the get user profile by username method in our admin service and as you know if the result is null if the result is not null we return ok and if we cannot find any user then we will return a not found uh, response back to the user for any errors we will log the errors now let's look at the add user method the add user method here when we are adding a user we will fill out the add user form and then we will send the form data to the api endpoint if the form data is not valid we will validate the model state if it's not valid then we will return a bad request now let's look at the logic over here here what we are doing is we are going and 
checking if the form has any images so then we are creating a image file from the image that is uploaded we are creating a new image name and extension for the image so this code is used for creating the image and the image extension and uh, we will copy that from the form data that we have received the next thing that we will do is go ahead and create an application user object for all the details that we have received in the form data we will assign the appropriate values to our application user property for example the email that we received from our form data we will assign it to the email uh, property the username to the username property and so on so we have two addresses we will get the billing and the shipping address and assign it to the address model finally we will add the user we will pass the application user object and the password the password also comes from the form as i showed you we have a password generator that clear creates a temp password so the user when added we will check if the response contains a success key we have created a create response method which returns a dictionary so in that dictionary we are checking if the result contains a success string or a string called as success then we will go ahead and we will return success if it does not we return a bad request and the uh, system dot io dot file using the system path uh, get using the system dot io file we will supply the path of the image because we have created an image file and stored it on the database to upload it now we no longer need that image because this process failed so we will delete that image we don't want to clutter our database with unwanted files so if the user could not be created we don't also want to store their profile image we will go ahead and delete it so that is it for this method pretty straightforward creating the image mapping the object and adding the user and then finally handling the response so let's close this now and then look at the edit user edit user is basically our update user method we get the form data and the user id since the user is already created they are updating the account so they will already have a user id and the user id and the form data is passed to the update profile method and then the logic as i explained will update the user the response is a success we return ok we get a result we return ok if not there is a bad request sent back to the client as a response deleting user we will go ahead and mark the user as inactive calling the delete user method as i explained why we have to mark them inactive because in a cms application that can be so many reasons one of them as i explained was if we delete the user the user history will be deleted so finally we have the reset password method in the reset password method we will call the reset password uh, async method from the admin service we will reset the user's password now here very important thing to see is once we reset the password we i explained that we will generate a code and the code expires after a certain period of time we need to send that code to the user so that they can use it or click on it now that code can only be sent if we have an working email service in our application at this point in this video tutorial we have not yet implemented the email service so for now i have just put note that send email with a new password to the user we will after we have implemented the email service we will write the logic over here to send the emails for now i've just put my comment over here so don't worry we will implement this when we have the email service up and running we have going to use two email providers that is gmail and uh, sendgrid so i'll show you to implement both of these email providers in the project so that should be it for the api endpoints we have created this api endpoint successfully we have created the view successfully with the javascript methods we have created the backend service for the admin and now we have implemented all the logic now what remains is testing the logic in the application before we do that we will go ahead and rebuild our application to make sure we don't have any errors if we don't have any errors we will go ahead and then start testing the user section view and the all user uh, list that is going to be created so our application was built successfully we have zero errors let's go ahead and run this application to make sure that everything is working fine 
So the application is loaded. Let's go to the admin panel and go to the uh, profile to make sure that nothing over here is broken because when we add a new feature we always test any additional or the old features are working or not working so profile is working security page is loading in the inspect tab we don't see any errors that's good also we will make sure that the activity service is working yes now let's go to the user section all users all users are loading we just have two errors on the profile or on the console that's the profile image of the user since we had used an invalid image path when we created the users so the image cannot be found on that specific path or cannot be found on that specific image source path that we had provided so we will fix this it's a good way we can also test the update user feature so let's go ahead and update this users details we will change the photo and then we will update the information we'll go ahead and fill out this form so I have updated this form I have added all the information on the form and then I'm going to accept the terms and conditions and then let's click update to make sure that the update works let's also inspect for any errors in the console tab so let's clear this and let's go ahead and hit update so the user details was updated we received a success response now if we go and check the user once again we should have all the information that we had updated on the user's profile if we refresh this page we should still retain this information because that's what we have now on file for this user we also need to make sure that the details were updated in the database so let's go ahead and make sure that the changes uh, took place so if we go to Azure Data Studio we should see the information of the user over here if we refresh we should see the new information of the user we see that the email was confirmed uh, was okay we have all other information we also need to make sure that the address was updated in the address table so the user ID is 74PA so let's go to the address table and we have two entries for the user 74BA we will see that the shipping and the billing address is updated and the information as I see on my form is over here in the database for shipping and billing address so the update functionality works we can also try adding a new user to make sure that the add user functionality works as well so let's go back to the form and now let's go ahead and add a new user so that we can test the delete functionality so let's go ahead and fill this form and let's add a new user so i've updated the add user form i've added some user details and here I have also tried to test if I try to add a user with an existing email in our database what uh, will happen so we will test that as well also we will check the shipping address uh, same as billing if we click this so as you can see the address gets copied over we'll accept the terms and condition we have set the user's role as customer and we will save this password just to test if we can log in with this uh, user information so now let's try to see if we can add this user to our database or we get an error because we should get an error because we cannot use a email that's already being used by someone else or a username so as you can see we got an error from the database we could not create a user with the email that is already existing in our database and the response that we received failed username admin is already taken email admin at cms.com is also already taken so we cannot use someone else's emails we have to use another email so test was successful so let's go ahead and add some other email test at cms.com and the username we will say test 22 or you can use whatever we are just testing password I'll save it so I need to log in and test if the user can log in so I'll go ahead and add this user now 
So the user was created. We receive a success response from our database. The test passed. So let's close this and we have the user created. Let's go and refresh. So we have an issue with the image. The image of the user is not loading when we are adding a new user. We will fix this. So that's an error that we need to fix. So obviously we don't have an image. So we would not be able to go ahead and edit it now because if we edit the user we know that the image feature is working the upload image feature so we want to fix that so for now i will not try to fix it now what i'm going to do is try to log in into the application uh, uh, with this user credential this user is not an admin user so if i try to log into the admin panel i should get an error so the username is test at cms.com so i will log out and then i'm going to add the use the password that i had used to create the user so let's go ahead and log in so we were not able to log into the admin panel because the user does not have any admin privileges so the uh, even though the password was valid we received an error so in the next video tutorial we will fix that image issue that we had uh, while we are adding the user we could not uh, see the image of the user in the table so we will fix that also after we have fixed that issue we will go ahead and delete the user to see that the delete functionality works and if the user is actually deleted from the uh, database or is just mark inactive we will test that as well so for this video tutorial this should be it if you have any questions use the comment section and uh, all the code will be available in the devops repo do not forget to like and subscribe these are so much uh, this is so much effort and so many lines of code that we have put together to make this video tutorial all we are asking is for a like and subscribe so once again don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching this video tutorial